told you to get a life. You know, you're somewhere and say something to somebody and they say, why don't you just get a life? Well, I want to read what Jesus said in the Gospel of John chapter 10, verse 10. He says, the thief comes not but to steal, to kill, to destroy. I have come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. Jesus came to give life. And I'm inviting you on a journey with me because I'm, I'm really intrigued by this life that he came to give to you and I. So he didn't come to give rules or regulations. He didn't even come to give us a moral code. A lot of people think following Jesus just means uh, doing what he says or some kind of behavior change in your life. You quit doing this, you start doing that. He, he didn't come, he didn't do that. He said, I've come to give you life. This word life is a fascinating word. We live life. All of us have lives that we're living. And maybe your life is great. You know, I was, that's how you doing? Oh, I'm doing good, doing, doing great. Living the dream. Uh, another day in paradise. We have these phrases to try to describe the life that I'm living. I live a busy life. My life's just busy. My life isn't very good. Some people want out of their life. And the sad thing is they take their own life. They commit suicide or they try to lose their life in drugs or alcohol our entertainment and all of this is coming somewhat out of a need for a better life uh, there is a bumper sticker in flagstaff and all it has is b l e on it i didn't know what that meant i saw many many cars had b l e and what it means is best life ever uh, some man had passed away and people that loved him, I think this was his phrase, BLE, best life ever. Well, Jesus didn't come to give us uh, some kind of religion. He said, I come to give you life. Now, tying into this word life, in the book of Jude, it says that, beloved, Jude was actually a half-brother of Jesus, so he was a brother that grew up in the same house that Jesus did, and he wrote a letter, and he says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. He wanted to write of the common salvation uh, not common in the sense of that you see it everywhere. Or it's just a common thing like a penny on the floor. That's common. It, that's not the meaning of that word. It means that the salvation you have is the same that I have. It's common. It's the same. Uh, one salvation isn't different from someone else. There's a lot of religions in the world that are completely different. But our salvation is the same. He saved us to the uttermost. And Jude wanted to write about it. He says, man, I, I, I want to write to you about this salvation, but I found it necessary. He saw a great need in the church and amongst believers, and he said, I, I got to write to you instead of about our salvation. You need to really fight for the faith. Faith was being twisted. The faith was being made into something that it wasn't originally to be made in and received. And so he says that we need to contend and to fight for that faith. So anyway, I'd like to invite you on this journey into life. Let's explore it. And the way we'll do this is through the Bible. I want to use a scripture because I do believe that the Bible is, is not just historical facts, but it's really describing this life that Jesus came to give us. 
To begin this, I want to start in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, because it talks about God at the very beginning. This is before creation. This is before anything was created. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. Now, we understand that God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But in the beginning, it was God, and in God was the Word. It later says in that chapter that the Word became flesh. And when he became flesh, the word becoming flesh was given the name Jesus. So when you say Jesus, you're addressing God in his humanity. It's not very confusing at all. If you say the word, you are addressing the eternal aspect of Jesus. So he's dual in a sense. He's all God and he's all man. I love it. It's a mystery. He's bigger than the way we can understand certain things. We believe this. And so the Word became flesh, but before it became flesh, he was God, he was with God, and it was through him that all things were created. So the Word was spoken, the Word spoken created all things. You see, we speak words. I'm speaking words to you. I'm communicating to you. But originally, speech or word wasn't for communication. It was for creation. And we really see this because many times people say things about their life and they're actually creating the very life that they're living in by the words that they speak. Very powerful. And I don't want to get sidetracked on this. I want to stay with exploring this life. Now watch, it continues in the same chapter. It says, in him was life. So in the word was life. In the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend it. So we begin to see that the um, <laughs> life, I'm sorry, this uh, squirrel just came <laughs> it's down this tree. Uh, this is the rather wonderful place I'm sitting. I got animals all over me. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's kind of startled me. So life was in the word and when God created man, Light came into that man. The, it, it's, it's amazing. It says the light shine, the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Now we begin to talk about Jesus. It says there was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all the that all through him might believe. He was not that light, John the Baptist, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. Everything that was created was created by the word and the word produced light in life, L-I-F-E, life. God created life. And then Jesus became flesh, or the Word became flesh, became Jesus. And he's described there as the true light. Not, not all these other kind of lights. He was the true light. This light really lit every man that was born into the world. I want to go to Romans chapter 1 because now we begin to talk about what happened to this light. Every, every person created has this light, and it really describes it here in Romans chapter 1. 
It says in verse 18, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what they be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shown it to them. He, see, here's this light. God is manifesting himself to all men. Goes on, listen to this. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power in Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So what is it saying? God is invisible. He is spirit. Many people say, oh, I don't believe in God. I can't see him. All right. But you know there's God because of creation. Everything around you. I'm, I'm sitting here. And you can see this, this tree right here. How did that tree come into existence? If I really look at that tree, I begin to understand that there is a creator, that there's someone greater than me, someone that is very, very powerful, very amazing, because he created creation. Everything around you, not just this tree, the stars, the oceans, the mountains, the animals, the fish, creeping things, all of this is a display of God, and you're without excuse. You are without excuse because you're surrounded by the work of God, and by just looking at that, you know, you know there is a creator. Now watch what happens to this person, this creation of God, who are without excuse. He said they have no excuse. They, you can't just say, well, I just didn't know there was a God. Oh, you cannot say that. Watch this. Because all they, although they knew God, they knew God. They knew there's an inner knowledge that there's God. <laughs> whether you like it or not, whether you even believe it or not, you know. So what did you do? It, it tells me right here, they did not glorify as God, nor were thankful. Oh, I thank God for the rain. I thank God for the soft wind, the warm wind. I thank God for the seasons. Seasons. Who started that, folks? I'm entering into the fall. I live in Flagstaff in fall. The trees are changing. Right now it's a little chilly. I, I hope the sun comes back out because it's a little chilly. Pretty soon it's going to be just outright cold. It moves from fall into winter. And the winter lasts four months, five months. It's cold, below zero, snow. But I know spring's coming. I've lived on this planet 72 years. It's never changed. I'm able to go to the ocean every year, Malibu. And you know what? When I get there, I go right out on this deck and I look out on the ocean and guess what? The waves are still coming in, going out, coming in, going out. What a rhythm. And I wonder, what, did they start because I was here? <laughs> Who started it? Who said stop? Those waves only come in a certain way, and then they stop, and then they retreat. Come back, stop, and then retreat. Who did that? Who put that in motion? The galaxy, oh, do we have time to even talk about the galaxy and the, we're, we're in, a, in, in this galaxy, and you have the sun, and Venus, and Mercury, and Saturn, and Earth, these planets that are arranged in our solar system. I know that night's going to come. I'm, I have a certain amount of time, and daylight, and then it's going to get dark. And then I go to sleep, and then I know the sun's going to come up. 
if the sun's not coming and moving, it's stationary, and it's the earth that begins to turn. It's moving right now. Who, who did that? Move this earth one inch out of its kilter, we're gone. So faithful. That's God. See, and you weren't thankful. You did something. You know. You know. You can't deny this. Oh, no. If you're watching this, and, and I hope you are. I hope you're listening and just thinking a moment. Just think for a little bit. I know life's hard. I know you got to get to work. I know you got to make money. I know you got to do this and you got to do that. But have you ever stopped and just thanked him for the rain, for the sunshine, for the creation of a seed? Do you know everything we have, everything we eat comes from that wonderful creation of a seed? And we know the laws of sowing and harvest. It's God. But you didn't glorify, you didn't honor God, nor even yourself. You, you, you placed honor on what you do, on your achievements, on your goals, your bank account, where you live, the color of your skin. Now, folks, please, let's be smarter. Watch, th this, is, this is a picture of what happened with the light in the life, the life of God. And we see that life creating, but we didn't glorify, we weren't thankful. And it says that we became futile in our thoughts. We began to think futile, futile, empty, vain. And their foolish hearts were darkened. The heart that was to be full of light Life became dark, and then we began to profess. We began to talk. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Instead of worshiping the creator, we began to worship the creature, the creation. Worship the tree, worship nature. We get out there and oh, the nature. I hear a term now when people think of this power or something happening, they say, well, it's the universe. It's just the universe did it. Professing to be wise, you have become a fool. Evolution, you have become a fool. Martians from the outer space came and put man here and then they took off professing to be wise, you became a fool. So what happens? There's consequences. I'll tell you what happens. It says right here, God gave them up to uncleanness and the lusts of their hearts, to dishonor their bodies among themselves, they exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever, amen. See what happens when you refuse to acknowledge God and honor and be thankful. Your heart gets dark and you begin to say things that are so foolish, but yet you present it to think that you're very wise, that you're really a fool. And so what happens is you dishonor your body. Your body, this creation of God, you, you do things with it that are not honorable. You treat it in a way that dishonors your body. You, you are moved by your appetites instead of saying that I'm made and created in the image of God after his likeness. Folks, if we're going to continue with this wonderful wonderful journey into the life of God because Jesus came the true light and he says I'm going to give you that life you've lost it it's gone it's, it's vacant and you're trying to replace it with your own creation of li life it's not very satisfying so I don't come to give you rules or regulations I come to give you life and if you believe in me believe in Jesus 
and what he did and who he is. That life will fill you. Light will come and shine. That's fantastic. Pray today, Jesus, forgive me of my idolatry. I became an idolater. Maybe you don't bow down to a statue. Many do. You'll pray to a ceramic statue has eyes but can't see, ears but can't hear, mouth can't talk, but they'll pray to it. And with the same material, they'll make a pot or a pan. Forgive your God, forgive us of our idolatry. You worship money, you worship another human being, or a, a cow, a dog. I pray that the life, believe for the life that Jesus came. We're going to find out more about it. God bless you.